Wait, you're serious? You're using nymphs today and you're not using jig hooks? Oh, come on, listen. I'm Tim from Trout and Feather Farm. I'm gonna give you tons of reasons why you should start using those jig hooks starting today. Let's go. All right, whenever I first started getting into European nymphing, I ran right down that rabbit hole, and I think one of the first things that captured me were some of the beautiful flies that so many tires were tying. That one that really just grabbed me was called a paradigm. And that image, I saw some of these paradigms, and they were tied, and they were like resting upside down. I was like, that's cool, must be very artistic. Little did I know I was about to really make that leap down into jig hooks, because that's what they're primarily tied on. If you look at this image right now, you'll see a hook and you'll see how the point of the hook is sitting up in the air. Now that doesn't just happen magically. What's going on there? We have this fly that's resting on the shank and it's, it kind of does so whenever it's paired with the appropriate slotted tungsten bead. So now you look at it, it's riding upside down. How is it gonna fish? Exactly like that for, we'll say most of the time. That's a benefit to all of us as fly fishers. Now that we have that hook point riding primarily up, we benefit from a couple different ways. First of all, it's less likely to snag. I mean, I'm right next to a river. Yesterday, I had a day I felt like I was just snagged up all the time on rocks, on branches. Carson's behind the camera laughing at me right now. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Now that you have a hook point that's riding hook point up, you're less likely to snag. I can't imagine how many instances I would have been just losing flies yesterday had it not been for these jig hooks. The other great thing about them Every time I set the hook on a fish and I bring it in, it just seems like more often than not, that fish is kind of hooked in the upper part of its mouth. And for some reason, whenever I have a hook there and I'm guiding them with a little bit of side pressure, they just really make a run over to my net a lot faster than if I'm hooking them in the sides or the bottom of their mouth. That tends to happen more so with these jig hooks. Because so many of us are turning to jig hooks, manufacturers have started to notice. I mean, they're starting to make jig hooks in a variety of sizes barbless options, even longer shanks. And that really benefits us, especially as fly tires, because it gives us a little bit more versatility when we're tying nymphs at our bench. Does that mean that jig hooks are the perfect hook? Absolutely not. There are some downsides at times. One of the main ones is that whenever you have this bead and it comes down the hook eye at about a 45 degree angle, you're gonna notice it's going to close your gap a little bit. That means it's gonna be a little bit tougher to hook some fish. Does that matter for the average fly fisher? Probably not, but that's something to keep in mind. But then again, you know what I'm gonna say, there are some hook manufacturers out there that have created jig hooks with an extra wide gap. More about that in a second. Another downside that I ran into, especially earlier on whenever I was using these jig hooks, I wanted to tie hooks on as small a size as possible. I wanted 18s, I wanted 20s, I wanted 22s. Spoiler alert, I couldn't find 22s for a long, long time, and I still don't even really tie jigs on them. But whenever I did have some smaller jig hooks, especially in sizes 18 and 20, and I hooked a significant fish, I'm talking something around 16 to 24 inches for a trout, I bent out a lot of those hooks because I realized some of the hooks that I was purchasing, they just weren't up to snuff necessarily. Because of that, that bend and you were using such a fine wire, they would just open up, I would lose the fish, and I would be a little upset. So you really do have to be cognizant of which hooks you're purchasing out there. I know what you're asking. Which hooks do you use, Tim? I'll give them to you, but first, take a moment, like this video, so I know you wanna see more videos like this. All right, thank you. And now, on to my recommendations. And didn't I kinda of give it away a little bit? I'm wearing a Honic hat right now. Honic hooks, I mean, you have been seeing me use these for years in my videos. I wrote my book, Fly Tying for Everyone. I, pretty much every fly in that book was tied on a Honic hook. I mean, I love them. There are three main ones that I kind of turn to. The first one, my all-around jig hook, is called the H400BL by Honda. It's a barbless hook. That 400 has kind of a, a regular hook gap. It hooks a ton of fish. If I'm using sizes 12, 14, I'm going for the H400s. If I want a hook with a wide gap, then I'm gonna go with something like an H450 by Honda. What I like about that wide gap, it widens it up a little bit. I don't like using like a wide gap hook in a smaller size. I just feel like it's gonna be more prone to bend, even though I've never bent out a Honda H450. But whenever I think about using something like, we'll say a size 16 jig hook, but I wanna use an oversized bead, that's when I'm gonna use that Honic H450 with the wide gap. Because I know that large bead isn't, it's gonna close the gap on the 400, not so much on the 450. 
So that's a conscious decision I'll make whenever I'm choosing that hook. What about small jig hooks? Come on, Honix got one of those too. My favorite small jig hook. This is one you probably haven't seen much in my videos yet. It's called the Honic H480BL. Again, that BL is barbless. This is called the Jig Champion. I mean, do I need to say anything more than that? This is just one of my go-to jig hooks, especially down to size 20. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Are there links to these hooks? Sure, I should have some links down below, but what about all of you who are kind of like me and you bought thousands of traditional nymph hooks over the years? What are you gonna do with those hooks? Are you gonna throw them away? Absolutely not. There are some ways that you can convert those nymph hooks so they can ride hook point up. There's actually some knots that you can tie with your tippet. Or I'm going to put a link up on the screen somewhere right now to Devin Olson's Pleva Paradigon. And he shows you how to take basically a traditional nymph hook to invert the slotted tungsten B, and it will, it will help to encourage that hook point to ride hook point up. Great video. I'll also take this one step further. For anyone who's already purchased my book, Fly Tying for Everyone, one of my favorite patterns in that book is basically a poor man's woolly bug. It's called the Jig Bugger, and if you look closely, you're gonna see that it's kind of in a picture where it's riding hook point up, upside down, but it's not a jig hook. So I show you in my book how to take your traditional nymph hooks to invert that bead and tie it so you'll have that hook riding just like a jig hook, which you know I love, and they are so near and dear to my heart. The last kind of selling point that I'll talk about whenever it comes to jig hooks, the one weird thing, whenever I was at my fly tying bench sometime in the last year, I pulled out some of my traditional nymph hooks. And when I looked at those compared to some of these jig hooks, something really struck me. It was that the gap of these, we'll call them competition hooks, some of these modern jig hooks, is so much more significant than some of my old hooks. I mean, I don't know, if you're anything like me, you've been tying for who knows how many years, you still can remember something like the Mustad 9671 or the 94840. You know those numbers, don't you? But whenever you look at those hooks and you compare them to some of these modern jig hooks, that gap is truly significant. It makes me not even want to use some of those hooks anymore. Maybe they belong in a museum. It hurts me to say that, but that's the truth. I'm all in with these jig hooks today. I covered everything with jig hooks and why you should be using them. What questions remain? Shoot me an email. It's on the screen right now, tkamisa at gmail.com. You can find that down below. And if you look in the description, you can find more videos like this at my website, which is troutandfeather.com. If you're into social media, you'll find Trout and Feather everywhere, but most importantly, if you're tying some of your favorite patterns on jig hooks, post them on social media, use the hashtag, hashtag Trout and Feather, so I see them, so I can comment on them, and so I can reshare them with all of my fly fishing community. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing many of you soon. Find me everywhere.